Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what happens when you collide two planets? We generally have a pretty good idea, and we have a lot of simulations that allow us to imagine such an event. But what happens when a planet collides with a star? Now that's a completely different question, and in this video we're going to be investigating the effects and possible observations of such events. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So let's start right here. This is known as WASP-12b. Today it's known as the darkest planet in the universe simply because this is the darkest planet we've discovered so far. It's been compared to charcoal dark or essentially um, absorbing about 94% of light and this is maybe what it kind of looks like if you were to look at it from a distance. This is compared to our own Jupiter. At the same time, some other simulations suggest that it may also kind of look like this, a kind of a egg-shaped planet because of all of the stretching it received from its parent star. And this is what it also looks like in some of the modern NASA simulations, basically an egg-shaped planet. But this is not the only things that we've discovered about this unusual planet. Recently, the scientists studying this planet discovered that it's slowly moving closer and closer to its parent star and you were able to calculate by how much. Now this is something we obviously expect because if a planet is this close to, to the parent star, it's probably going to at some point fall into the star. And even though this was speculated before and we obviously predicted these events to happen, we didn't really know until now by how much these planets move towards stars. And even though a single orbit currently takes roughly around one day, it also is decreasing by about 29 milliseconds every single year, meaning that within about 3 million years from today, it's going to collide with a star. But this is where the mystery begins. As of today, we don't really know what exactly happens when planets do collide with stars. We think that this, these events are pretty common, we actually think that at least one planetary collision occurs in the entire galaxy every two years. But the thing is, obviously they're a lot more difficult to detect and some of the planets are just too small for us to see any effects. But if a gas giant collides with a star, that's a different story. So if a hot Jupiter collides with a star, it's very likely going to produce major effects. And there's a very very likely chance that we've seen this happen a few years ago. So let me briefly talk about a star known as V838 in the constellation of Monoceros. This very large, very massive and very bright B-type star was kind of not really well known to us because it's pretty far away, it's about 20,000 light years away from us. But starting in 2002 and lasting for a few years, it became one of the most famous objects, creating one of the most beautiful effects we've ever seen. And this is the effect I'm talking about. This was actually filmed over the period of several years. It created this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful cloud that didn't really look at like any other nebula or supernova and we couldn't really easily explain how this acquired such a shape or how all of this was happening. Initially, some of the scientists thought that this is a type of a nova when basically um, a nuclear reaction occurs around a white dwarf, but we realized that there was no white dwarf here and it was a B-type star. So some scientists started speculating that maybe this was actually a collision between two stars or maybe this was a collision between a star and a planet. And both of these in some sense make sense. If this was a star-star collision, then the larger object was probably around 8 masses of the sun, while the smaller object here was about 0.3 masses of the sun. So it was a collision between a B-type and a red dwarf. Now, in this simulation, it's very likely going to just create a supernova. We're not going to really see anything as beautiful as you just saw from the actual images that we took. But nevertheless, this gives you an idea that these events could occur and we may have witnessed one. But at the same time, many scientists don't think that this was a star-star collision. Some scientists think that this was actually our first observation of exactly what we were predicting is going to happen around WASP-12b. Essentially, a hot Jupiter slowly making its way toward the star and then colliding with it. And even though in this simulation only a very little explosion was created on the surface, in reality, V838 for a very brief period of time became the largest star in the galaxy. It expanded dramatically. Just to give you a solar system comparison, it's as if our sun expanded to be... Okay, this is actually going to take a while. I'm gonna have to start increasing its size by a lot here. And you can see that it already actually changed its properties. But it's going to end up swallowing the entire solar system. Because its total radius was about 1500 astronomical units. That is about 
50 times as far away as Neptune is from the center of our solar system. And then, slowly, it started shrinking. So it went from being about a million degrees to only about 15,000 degrees, and also a uh, size of Betelgeuse by 2014. So it took it about 12 years to suddenly shrink to be comparable in size to Betelgeuse right here. And it still is probably shrinking even today, but the initial explosion, as you can see, produced a tremendous amount of various materials just being completely thrown out of the system. This cloud is going to stay there for a very long time and it's going to be really, really beautiful even in the years to come. Today it actually kind of looks like this, this is a more modern picture, but it's still going to transform for many years. And since this star is actually relatively young, it's only about 4 million years old, it probably did experience some sort of initial collision either with its partner star or a planet. But if it was a planet, it had to be a very large, very massive planet, very similar to a lot of these hot Jupiters we've been observing pretty much everywhere around our galaxy. And WASP-12b could be this next candidate for such a very tremendous explosion. But why was this cloud even created? How could this even be possible from a typical planet? Well, the models today suggest that when a typical planet comes closer and closer to its parent star, at some point, if it's a gas giant that has a lot of hydrogen on the inside, this hydrogen starts creating deuterium, which is a typical isotope of hydrogen. And then deuterium begins its fusion and creates a tremendous amount of energy, which leads to the sudden expansion of the planet. And as it keeps increasing in size and sort of expanding, this ends up producing even more deuterium and thus even more expansion. And at some point this becomes such a fast reaction that the entire planet kind of just bubbles up and I guess in some sense explodes. So it's almost like a very unique runaway nuclear reaction that explodes the planet creating this extremely bright and very powerful cloud that can be seen from really far away everywhere in the galaxy. But this most likely takes a very special kind of a planet and it also probably only happens around stars that don't get a chance to break up this planet into little pieces and into a kind of a ring around themselves. So essentially the planet has to stay as one piece and then somehow approach the planet to initiate this reaction. Because normally if I were to just place a planet here in the orbit around the star, not only would it evaporate, but it would also start falling apart, creating a kind of a fragmented ring here, which would very likely not create these explosions. So very special conditions have to be reached for this to actually occur. And what this means for the darkest planet in the galaxy, for WASP-12b, is that it's very likely at some point going to become this type of an explosion as well. Assuming, of course, we're correct about the origins of this cloud right here. If, however, this was a star-star collision, we might not be able to see this for a while. Yet, if it's a hot Jupiter to star collision, we're probably going to see one within the next few decades, or possibly even sooner than that. In other words, these large planet to star collisions could be a lot more common than we thought. But a lot more investigations are needed, and a lot more studies need to be done on exactly what we think might happen if a typical gas giant falls into a star. But the bigger question here is, of course, has this happened in the solar system? It's very likely we did have unusual planets in the solar system that fell into the star, at least in the beginning of the formation of the solar system. But if something similar to this was generated when the solar system was only 4 million years old, how did everything else stay in orbit? Did this have some sort of a profound effect on the formation of the planets? Or did it just not happen at all? So this is something we need to investigate in order for us to understand a little bit better what made our solar system the way it is and how we came to be here as well. So I guess one day maybe we'll discover the answers to these questions, but maybe also this will remain a mystery for a very long time. Until then though, it's kind of cool that we discovered that WASP-12b is going to collide with its star in the next 3 million years, but we probably are not going to be around to see it. If you want to learn more about the study, it's in the description below, and if you'd like to learn more about planetary collisions and what may happen with various planets when they collide with stars, make sure to subscribe because there's going to be more videos coming on this topic in the near future. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.